Okay guys, welcome to another video. What we're going to be discussing today is the distributive property. Now, when it comes to the distributive property, um, what you tend to see, and this is just a continuation of algebra, what you tend to see are brackets. So if you don't see brackets, you typically don't have to do distributive property. So brackets are key. So I'll give you an example where you see brackets and where you have to apply distributive property. So let's say you have two bracket x plus three. This has a bracket. So what I would do is I would distribute that two inside, but we'll get to that in a minute. So um, I've got the steps down here for the distributed property, but before I do that, what I want to do is I want to go over what a numerical coefficient is and what a literal coefficient is. Okay, so here's some examples. So we've got terms like this, 2x squared. Okay. The term underlined in red is the numerical coefficient. It's just the number. The, the rest of it is called the literal coefficient. Okay? So that's the literal coefficient. And by literal, it means it has a letter. Okay? And the red is the numerical coefficient. So we've got literal and numerical coefficients. And we went over this in the um, video about uh, the video about distinguishing between um, very literal and numerical coefficients. We actually did a video about this. Um, but anyway, so how do you apply distributive property? So if you see a bracket, this is step one. If you see a bracket, multiply the term outside the bracket to each term inside the bracket, and you multiply the numerical coefficients together and add the exponents on the variables only. Okay? Now, the variables here have to be the same variable. So, for example, if I'm distributing 2x into x plus 3, I would add the exponents on the two x's. But if one variable was x on the outside, but the variable on the inside was y, these letters are not the same. So adding the exponents actually doesn't apply. It's actually a power law. Okay? So let's get to it. Because once you finish that, once you finish that off, you're pretty much done. Okay? So let's do some examples of distributive property, shall we? So example, let's say 1. Example 1. 2x plus 3. Now, the term outside the bracket doesn't actually have a variable. So you don't have to worry about adding any exponents together. All we have to do is multiply the 2 inside to each term. Now, how do you multiply a numerical coefficient okay, by a letter? Well, there is a numerical coefficient outside x. It's 1. When you don't see a number, you assume it's 1. So all you have to do is multiply 2 and 1 together, and you get 2. And then since I don't have to add any exponents, I just write x. Now, that's not the end of the story. Because the other half is 2 times 3, which is 6. So the distributed property, the first example, is 2x plus 6. Now let's try the second one. 3 bracket x minus 5. And you know what? This might be a little confusing. Why don't we go with A and B? Okay, example A, example B. Here, I multiply the 3 into each term, I get 3x minus 15. Okay? Now, let's add a variable outside the bracket. So let's go 2x, x plus 3. So the only difference between a and c are that 2 outside now has an x. So how do we multiply 2x into x? Well, I multiply the numerical coefficients together, so I go 2 times 1, which is 2. And then I add the exponents on the x's. What are the exponents there? Well, when you don't see an exponent, you assume it's 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I go x squared. Then I multiply 2 and 3 to 
together, okay, to get the next term. And since this guy doesn't have a variable, I don't have to add any exponent onto this one. So I end up getting 6x to the 1, or just 6x. That's how I distribute 2x to x plus 3. Okay? So now, part D. Let's increase the exponents and see what happens. So I've added a bunch of exponents, and I've made it a little bit more difficult. Now the numerical coefficient outside the x squared is a 1. All I have to do is multiply 2 and 1 together, I get 2, okay? And then all I have to do is add the two exponents together, and I get x to the 4, right? 2 plus 2 is 4. Then I multiply 2 and 4 together, and I get 8. Then I add the exponents here. Let's see, I've got a 2 and a, and a 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. There you go. Party. E. Um, let's see, let's, let's, let's lengthen the amount of terms inside the bracket, shall we? So let's say, okay, so we got 4x, x squared, minus 2y plus 6z cubed. Let's try to expand or distribute 4x into each term. So the first term should just be, based on what we've learned, 4x cubed. There you go. Now, in the second term, I should get minus 8. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. But the x and the y are not the same variable, so I don't have to add the exponents. In these cases, all I would do is just place the letters right beside each other. That's it. Next term, last term, I get 24. And in this case, x and z are not the same letter. And for you Americans out there, I apologize, I'll call it a z. So x and z are not the same letter. So I would just place those beside each other. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the distributive property for that example. Let's do a couple more. F. And let's make it really tough. Here we go. Um, 6x uh, y minus x squared y z minus uh, x y squared and we'll leave it at that and you know what let's let's up the game here so minus 10 uh, 2 and we'll leave it at that now in this case I'm not distributing a variable inside so I don't have to add any exponents all I have to do is multiply the 6 in so I get 6 x y minus 12 x squared y z minus 60 x y squared now that is the fun and exciting world of distributive property. Now what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to merge the concepts that we learned um, with like terms, okay, collecting like terms, and I'm going to merge that with distributive property. So I'll have some examples where I do distributive property, but then I have to collect like terms as well to simplify expressions. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.